I just migrated my account from a Mojang account to a Microsoft account and now I have a legitimate cape. I welcome you to this episode of Minecraft Hardcore. The cape looks really nice when flying. If you look closely, <laughs> we have an issue here. We don't want oxidized copper on there. And to prevent the copper from oxidizing, we need honeycomb, I think, or honey wax. I don't have any on me because I've been a little bit busy. I have gotten some bees and they are in here. <laughs> we have this bees nest and these two bee hives and they are completely full, I think. And I want to be building a big farm and for a big farm, we need more beehives that are completely filled. And so I've been setting up this area that I will use to completely fill up all of these. I think this is 16 and this will be 32 beehives with bees. So I need a lot more um, honeycomb to make the rest of the beehives. Then I will open this up with half slabs so that only the baby bees can go through. I will breed the bees the bees that the baby bees that don't find space over there they just come over here and i think we can fill up all of these for our farm maybe you have been aware that when i am building farms i want to learn about making them i wanted to say beautiful but that isn't the eye of the beholder but at least try to make them look nice and that's also what i'm going to work on for this bee farm today and I have a great plan already, but I need lots of brown, <laughs> lots of brown stuff. <laughs> so basically, we need brown dye, we need to find ourselves a jungle, we need concrete powder, and we need lots of terracotta. And actually, I don't only need brown terracotta, but also black terracotta, as the black terracotta, we will take a look, it looks awesome, and it looks awesome in a brown gradient. I have been cheating a little bit and I saw that the <laughs> the closest jungle is 6,000 blocks away. So I think I have to get myself ready. I already got quite a bit of rockets. I have four more stacks in my ender chest. And just to be sure, I'm getting my second elytra ready. Let's see if I have another mending book, but unbreaking, I need to trade for it, I think. It sure is helpful to have two crafting benches around. Let's get these wings repaired. And with that, I'm heading out and I think we can cue the resource gathering montage. All the bees nests are crafted, but they are not filled yet with bees. And we will do that later, but for now, I want to be building the structure that this farm will go into. And I think it will be placed in this desert. 
and you'll see it in a minute but i think i will go for a similar look like this but later we will talk about it a little bit more Interestingly enough, we have this oxidized copper over there and I want to use copper again, but this time I want to use some oxidized and weathered copper. So actually, instead of axing <laughs> with my axe, scraping off the, the oxidized copper of this, I will exchange this with some fresh copper and then later wax the fresh one and use the oxidized one so that we don't have to wait over here. If I remember correctly, this amount of copper should be enough and we still have plenty more, almost another stack of copper blocks. Copper is really an interesting resource. As you probably know, it's fastest to just go mining, but you can also build a farm that you can AFK. But even then the farm is not, like it's still slower compared to just mining. So it's very interesting, but I think sooner or later, I wanna be building a farm as well. And we have to be a little bit careful here because it's directly connected. Maybe I'll turn off the farm just to be safe. After gathering all these resources and the copper we have, I think there's only one more thing we need, although I think I have that already. And that is more deep slate. Do I have a chest somewhere? This one. This one is it. I'm not sure if this will be enough. That's almost 10 stacks, but I think I have a lot more down here from when I was strip mining in the very beginning. Nine more stacks and a few more here. So I think we are set. Let's take a look at the color palette that I chose for this build. I just said color palette, but we are mostly going for a gradient and I love how my inventory looks right now. In this version, if I press E, it's a huge mess. But this almost looks like a creative inventory. And I just wanted to show you what we are going for. This is the gradient. We have the brown mushroom block. We have the granite. We have normal dirt and coarse dirt. We don't want this. We have the brown concrete powder, brown wool, brown terracotta. Something that I didn't mention earlier is the gray terracotta. And I don't have my pickaxe on me right now and the black terracotta. Let's get this back again so that my OCD is being satisfied. This is the gradient that we are going for and it mostly works amazingly. I think the granite is the odd one out, but once we have this built in place and you look at it from a distance, I think it will look really nice. You will be the judge of that. And then we are going for something similar that we have already with our mob farm. And that is for like the contours on the outside with the deep slate. We will be having the deep slate like this. And then this time around we won't have the normal copper but the oxidized copper. Some stripped stems like this. And some, and again my mouse is broken. And some of the, I think this is the weathered copper. You have the normal copper, the semi-weathered, the weathered, and then the oxidized. This will be what we're going for for the outlines and then also add some calcite in there again. I think it's gonna look quite amazing and we will have a lot of space for our honey farm and even more if we want to. So let's hop into the time-lapse, shall we?
and this is how far we have gotten. Yes, it's obviously <laughs> not quite done. As you can see, we are going for some kind of capsule shape. And that's why I said it's similar to, to our mob farm. But it's lying. It's not standing. So we will maybe later take a look at what I'm thinking. What like the fantasy, the story around this is. Yeah, I started with a shape. And obviously this will not stay as netherrack. But it was a little bit difficult to get the shape right. I did it in creative before. But when I'm going to put in the gradient and exchange all the blocks all the time. I just wanted to have the outline going a little bit. And I did the reverse in, on the bottom. So you can see the netherrack itself is going to get replaced. And then here I just dug it out. So right now it looks a little bit funny. But... This will be fixed later. Before we continue with the build though, I wanted to check on my bees because we actually need to start breeding some. Let's talk for a second about how this is working. We have these trapdoors in front of the bee nests and beehives. And what this will do is it will allow bees to enter the beehive because they can enter from any side, but they can only leave from the front. So if it's like this, they can leave again. And if it's like this, closed they cannot leave so we will be breeding the bees once we have the slabs in there and actually can reach them the small bees the baby bees the b -b -b bees um, <laughs> sorry for that um can fit through a slab gap <laughs> through a through a hole that's only half a block wide or or tall high and the big bees can't so the baby bees will come through here they will kind of try to get a flower, uh, pollinate a flower and then get into a beehive and can't leave again. And once all of them are filled, the next bees will come and not find a place anymore. And that is when I know we are done and all these nests are filled. Then I will just harvest them with an X and later put them into our farm. I think we can get started. I have put in the slabs and I haven't calculated how many flowers I need for the breeding, but I'm sure these 10 won't be enough. Let's get a second bee. Here we go. And let's see this process working. There should be a baby bee and it should follow me through here or maybe I should remove the flowers over there just for it to not be attracted to those flowers. Okay, baby bee friend. <laughs> You can come over now. Maybe I should also remove the nests, but I'm not sure. I thought they can fit through here. Or is that old information? Now, now she's coming. Okay, I think I need to think a little bit more <laughs> how I will set up this system. And I hope you're not going back. Let's observe. We did it. So now we only have uh, 16 times 3, 48, 47 more bees to go. I think I will update you once I have progressed a little bit more. Something is off. I, I am sure I recorded it earlier that I had at least 8 bees in here. And usually when it just starts to be morning, all of the bees leave their nests and hives. But it's only these two that are coming out and... The suspicion is growing that for some reason I only have these two bees. I don't know if I somehow lost them when the door was still open. I'm really a bit confused and I think, if I understand correctly, if I break a nest or a hive without silk touch, it just should just eject all the bees. So I think that's what I'm going to try. I can craft many of these again. Uh, I can not craft one of the nests, the... You can't see it right now, <laughs> but I think I'm fine with that as well because I can just try to look for more or like make more trees. Yeah, this could be dangerous, but I think because of the campfire underneath, they won't be aggressive. And if they get aggressive, they can't get me. I think these two come from this hive. So if I break this, nothing should happen, but they are angry. <laughs> They are angry. <laughs> Can you see the red eyes? They are mad. I'm sorry. Oh, and now they could actually... Ooh. 
if I'm not careful, they could actually take damage from the campfire. So let's let's take care of that. Pull it out. And I think they're not mad anymore, so they should like me again. <laughs> very nice, very nice. And I can breed them once more. This will be the third baby bee. And if it also goes into this one, the second one also went in there. We have our first hive completed. And it seems to always take a little bit of time for the baby bee to actually get through here. Now it worked. And maybe you saw already that I switched the position of the slabs. I think it's a little bit easier for them if the bottom slabs are put in and the top slabs are, are free. And with that, I should be able to break the second one. Are any of the bees mad? <laughs> oh, yes, they are. Yes, they are. Oh, no. Oh, that scared me so much. And now the bee is going to die. Oh, no. Why can they sting me through the door? That's not fair for you or for me. And I think <laughs> we need to rethink this effort a little bit. This bee is not mad anymore, but it's alone. <laughs> I think I need to open up some of those again and got, get all the bees over there. These are the three survivors. <laughs> and I will not let you down. I will breed you until you are maybe some 10 in here and fully grown. And then I will leave you alone and just look at you from the other side. <laughs> but for now, I will stay here until you grow up. So I think I can go AFK for some time and check in every couple of minutes, every 10 minutes or so. And I will see you in real life probably tomorrow, but in this video, just a sec. All right, it's certainly night time and I have to make sure because I have had some issues because I think this area was too big. Sometimes the bees wouldn't find an empty hive. But I think now I'm done. What I would always do is I would grab some flowers and just bring them through these corridors when they are walkable and they would just enter a hive when they found one and it being night is important because bees usually go into their hives into their nests when it's night time so i think i cannot be 100 percent certain but everything tells me that we are done we have all of these hives filled with bees and obviously when I said earlier that <laughs> I need 48 bees I was wrong because it's not 16 but 32 hives so it's actually 96 bees so I think these are extra right now and <laughs> we can head back to the build I was going to just build the honey farm but then I saw the inside and I just think it's super fun to see big spaces inside. This is what it looks like and we have a lot of space in here. As you can see I already built a pathway here. We will have a level below. Maybe we will even have a level above. And for the honey farm we want to have like a row or like a corridor and then have it on both sides. We need six blocks I think. And this exactly fits to the wall. <laughs> I can't remember if I measured that or if I happen to be lucky. I think, <laughs> I think the former. Let's take this opportunity to think a little bit about the vision for this place. I already did a few things down there and I will want to hear your opinion. So please comment down below your thoughts. And I will ask you more specific questions in a second. But this is what it's looking like from the far. And my thinking is, I didn't have a vision of this before, but it kind of developed after I built the mob farm. My idea is that this is some kind of dystopia, some kind of apocalyptic world where there are these structures or these capsules that maybe were sent down or maybe they were like put into the ground to, to save things for the future. 
And this would be one such capsule. And the brown stuff <laughs> would be some kind of rust. Maybe it would be like a steel capsule that is like strengthened by these bands. And then this is just rusty. And it was so long in the dirt. And that's what I'm going for with the gradient. But let me know what you think about this kind of vision. And I really started to enjoy this area with the savanna, but then also the desert. And I think we can really do many amazing things. And I've started to experiment a little bit. So maybe you can be very specific in your comments. What you like and what you don't like. I've added in some sand dunes or as if there was like a sandstorm or if this... For example, if this maybe was thrown from the space, then it could have landed here and kind of dug up the sand. They're like these kind of thoughts that I'm having. But then I'm also trying to diversify the sand a little bit because I think it looks nice. But at the same time, it's a little bit monotone. So I have tried a few different things. Let me know what you think. We have some path blocks here. We have some mushroom blocks, brown mushroom blocks. I have some here. So if I place two like this and then I break the top one that's the texture that we get we also have lots of dead bushes <laughs> I added a uh, wither skeleton skull and another one over there and I need to go to bed in a second um, and I also added the stripped birch wood which sometimes works as like some kind of wet sand at the beach and then we also have these spots I tried to not only have it as a single block This is also the mushroom blocks. Please let me know what you think looks nice. What works and what doesn't. I think the colors of the path block, for example, they have too much contrast. I like the idea, but I feel like it's too much contrast. If we look from afar again, maybe from top of the mob farm. If we look here, I think the colors just don't match. And to be honest, they don't match with the path, but also not with the mushroom. So I was trying this patch and I think it works a little bit better, but it's still, it still could use some experimenting. I like the dead bushes. I like, I like the wither skeleton head. I like the sand. So I think there's a lot of potential and I'm looking forward to transforming this desert more. Well, it is done. And now that I see all of this actually built in this world, I wonder if I went way overkill. As you can see, sometimes this farm has some issues. Not all of the items are always picked up 100% of the time. But as you can see here, we are getting quite some honeycomb. I think this is from 10 or 20 minutes, to be honest. Maybe 20 or 30. And then in this one, we don't have any yet because I just set it up. Uh, we will get honey bottles. So far, I didn't have enough glass. I only put one stack of glass bottles in each of the dispensers. I think this should be nice. I think we should be <laughs> swimming in honey and honeycomb very soon. If at any point I decide that I want to have less bees, especially because of lag, I can just push this glass block inside and then the bees will at one point go into their hives again, but then can't leave again. So... Probably when these chests are full, maybe I will add more chests down below. And once the storage is filled up, which will happen probably in a few days of me just playing in this world, I maybe will just pause this farm to reduce the lag in my world. This is how it looks from down below. Nothing fancy right now. And I think there are a lot of opportunities for this, for this capsule, <laughs> for this industrial, I don't know, whatever it will become. We have more space down below, more space up above. And that's it. That's it. I hope you enjoyed this episode as much as I did making it. And I will see you in the next episode.